Hi everyone. One of the questions I hear most often about iFlix is what's the minimum speed required to stream? And that's a really good question. Now one of the things that makes iFlix very viable in the Philippines is the fact that they use the Akami content delivery network. Now what that means is that iFlix put their content to Akami and then they deal with the distribution. So Akami peer directly with PLDT and then they peer with uh, other ISPs like Globe and Buy and DSL through the Philippine Internet Exchange so or the Philippine Open Internet Exchange so instead of your connection having to go all the way to a server in America to grab the video and then all the way back it just has to stay local so that really makes iFlix viable as a Philippine service now another thing that makes iFlix suitable is the fact that it has an adaptive quality or an adaptive bitrate. So what that means is that if your connection is really fast and you're streaming a video, it will give you the best quality that your connection will support. And if your connection is slow or if you have a lot of people using it which is slowing it down, it's going to reduce the quality of the video to make it so you can still have a smooth stream but it won't be quite as clear or quite as good quality. So that's a very useful feature, especially in a busy family where you have lots of members you know all bursting the internet at different times by having the adaptive quality it lets you kind of have a constant image even if it's not the best quality at least it would be smooth and you know easy to watch so today for my testing I'm going to use a simulated 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 Mbps connections and then a 512 Kbps and 256 Kbps. So basically from a pretty fast connection well for the Philippines um, down to a very slow connection now although they're going to be simulated speeds I am going to be using a real internet connection of course which is a PODT DSL line um, it's 15 milliseconds ping to a Kami and it's five hops away um, I also tested that on Globe for anyone that's curious uh, the ping from Globe to a Kami was 8 milliseconds and it was four hops away so they're pretty similar so it shouldn't really matter what ISP you're using now your results may vary from mine um, because it's not just about raw speed of course it's also about network quality if you have a lot of dropped packets you might experience issues if you're using a Wi-Fi router that doesn't work very well it might not perform as well as if you used a Ethernet cable so there are other things to consider also if you have a busy family with everyone connecting they're going to be consuming your bandwidth so there's a lot of things to consider bear in mind that these are simulated maximum speed so I'm saying I have a guaranteed 1 Mbps for example um, which would differ from having a regular 1 Mbps connection which is shared between people. So just take this as a guideline, um, you know, as a basis of getting an idea of what kind of speed you need depending on the quality that you want. Now for the test footage I'm going to be using Fargo and this is a TV show exclusive to iFlix. Uh, I've actually started watching this, I'm a few episodes in and it's a little bit dark but it's a pretty good TV show so we'll be using that as our test show. So let's go to the computer and start doing some tests. So we're going to start with 5 Mbps. You can see that the video loads quickly, the quality is very good, and I expect that it's not actually utilizing anywhere near as much bandwidth as what we have available. So whether it's 5 Mbps or 4 Mbps, we're probably not going to see a difference. So here we go with 4 Mbps, you can see it loaded just as quickly, quality appears to be the same. And if I jump around the storyline, you can see it loads quickly, there's pretty much no buffering. In the case, just want to make sure you know to focus on the break in it, maybe call some other town to see if they had a similar problem, no higher. Similar to three murders in now we go to 3 Mbps, maybe very slightly longer to load the video but minimal difference. The quality of the image appears to be about the same. I would say it's very similar between 3 Mbps and 5 Mbps. Here we go now with 2 Mbps. You can see it did take noticeably longer, still very quickly but it did take longer to load the video and there's definitely a difference in the quality of the video. 100% watchable, still looks good, but you do notice the difference. Now we go with 1 Mbps, loaded pretty quickly, but you can see that it does actually pause here where it has to buffer. So it did pause, now we're continuing again. You can see there is a noticeable 
difference in quality, especially when you look at the faces. Um, if you compare one Mbps to five, there is a difference. There's a, some buffering and some loss of quality, but overall it still works okay. It's probably on the very bottom of what you'd want to go to. Now we go with 512kbps. You can see it's taking a lot longer to load the video to buffer ahead. It paused for a moment there. Otherwise, seems to be okay. Not perfect quality and a few jitters. Now we're going to jump somewhere else in the storyline. Again, it's taken quite a while to load. Quality seems okay, so I assume it's enforcing a minimum bitrate. There are a few pauses here and there, but overall, it's kind of okay. I wouldn't want to use iFlix on 512k BPS. Now let's try 256. It's taking a very long time to load. Still loading. So this is an example of where they enforce a minimum bit rate rather than just degrading the quality to an unwatchable level. They'd rather let it buffer for a while. So it's still buffering, still loading. And there you go, we've got an image now, but it did pause almost immediately so they can Correct. buffer again. It's, it's so perhaps it could be workable, but I wouldn't it's recommend hella. going as low as this. Few people would have a connection as slow as this anyway, so it's not a big deal. Look, I can find the guy. Question is, what do you want done with it once? She's found. So the results were pretty surprising. Uh, anything over 3 Mbps doesn't really make a difference. Uh, I guess that's because iFlix have a maximum bitrate that they're going to stream. So it doesn't really matter if you have 3, 5, 10, 100 Mbps, you're going to get the same kind of quality. On the flip side of that, there also seems to be a lowest setting. For instance, it's not just going to keep making the image worse and worse and worse. At some point, it actually prefers to make it buffer rather than degrade the image quality. So there is a maximum, but there's also certainly a, a minimum by the looks of it. So the lowest speed that seemed to give a good quality image, a uh, smooth stream without any buffering or very minimal buffering, um, and being able to jump around the storyline was around 2 Mbps. Now that's a guaranteed 2 Mbps because we're using simulated tests. The 1 Mbps was okay, the image wasn't great, there was some buffering, but it worked. If you were in a pinch, you could probably get by on that. The 512 kbps and 256 kbps, to be honest, I didn't expect them to work at all. They did work, but there was a lot of buffering. Uh, the image quality was okay because, like I said, there must be a lower limit on that, um, so they prefer to make you buffer. To be honest, if you've got a connection that's that slow, I would say video streaming probably isn't for you. You might want to consider something like cable TV or satellite TV, you know, signal, something like that. Obviously, you don't have the benefits of on-demand with that, but yeah, your internet connection is probably not going to be good for video streaming with any service. Now, as I've said in previous videos, iFlix have a free trial. So really, you should just go there, sign up and try it for yourself, because unless you try it, you won't know for sure. Um, I've had people, you know, I've said to them, sign up. They're like, yeah, later, later. And then when they sign up, they're like, was that it? Because honestly, it takes about 30 seconds. You just put in your email address and password and that's it. You're signed in. Um, there's really not much else to it. So just sign up, try it for yourself because you won't know unless you try it. If you're an iFlix user, um, you could post a comment down below. Tell us what your connection is, how your experience is, because I'm curious to hear from other people how well it works for them. If you found this video interesting, please give a thumbs up and subscribe.